Let's talk about your work on the internet and democracy and specifically the historical, the origins of the internet. I mean, it, it, it gets a little bit complicated because there's this kind of hippie sort of, the internet started as this beautiful thing and it was California and you know, these hippies started programming and it was great. Um, and then somehow it became bad. <laughs> um, there was from the beginning, obviously, the military uh, dimension of the internet. Um, that seems to be central to the story. But that being said, I mean, in the 1990s, from reading you uh, and others, there really was a sense that the internet could be something that was genuinely open and democratic. And now, of course, Silicon Valley is a sort of leading edge of hyper monopoly capital and, you know, frankly, damaging our lives in so many ways. You know, it's funny, uh, Michael, because uh, you know, today we hold up the internet as an example of capitalism at its finest. You know, this is the free market creating new industries, new jobs, giving us new products, better advertising, whatever you want to say. It's capitalism uh, at the speed of light. And um, they usually mean that as a good thing, uh, as a compliment. And in fact, the internet, uh, the digital revolution is entirely a testimony to socialism. It is a socialist creation. Uh, all it was entirely as uh, there was no profit in the internet for the digital communication revolution at all for decades. It was entirely bankrolled and subsidized by the federal government through the military, through the grants to research universities uh, that really paid for this before anyone could make money on it. And this has been chronicled. Uh, there, we never would have had it if it hadn't been for government support. It, it wouldn't exist today, uh, and that's what we did. And the, in the 1990s, what took place was as it suddenly became ubiquitous, the World Wide Web, and from being just something that was used by a few scientists on a handful of research university campuses in the 1980s, to something that became fairly widespread on college campuses in the early 90s, to almost overnight after the World Wide Web, within a few years, becoming ubiquitous, and certainly by the end of the decade, even before we got cable broadband and high speed. Um, then the question was, well, how, what's going to happen now? Because in the early 1990s, as it's getting ubiquitous, uh, as people in the advertising community is freaking out, they had no, how are we going to advertise? No one's going to watch an ad on the internet thing is go to something else. You can't force people to sit through an ad. How are we going to like, we're going to go out of business. No one's ever going to watch an ad again. And uh, capitalists are saying, how can we make money on this thing? Who do we charge? Where's the way to make profits? They were freaking out. Uh, as one person put it, uh, I think it was Mark Andreessen, the, found, the founder of uh, Netscape, uh, the first great web browser, he said the problem with the internet is that it's militantly egalitarian uh, and it's anti-commercial. Anything commercial was opposed. The idea that there would be a hierarchy that you'd reinforce uh, inequality was opposed. So it was really an interesting phenomenon. It's going ubiquitous in a capitalist society, uh, but it's structured in such a way as to make capitalism almost impossible. And what happened during the 1990s is it was restructured again to make capitalism possible. Uh, and the most important thing that happened in terms of effect was the ability to have uh, ubiquitous surveillance of everything you do online. That was impossible, written out, made impossible in the 1990s. That was the joke about the internet. No one could know who you were when you were on it. You could have any identity you wanted, they could never find out. Well, that was taken away. That was completely stripped away because once they could track you, uh, then they could sell to you, and then they could package you and sell to advertisers. And then, then it became commercialized. So that all took place, and there was no debate over it. There wasn't like there was, a, even though this was government entity, there was no public debate with, let's consider the alternatives. It was basically taken and given to these folks of, uh, b behind closed doors. What's the process through which that happens? What are the major decisions that take place that allow that to happen? Well, in the case of the internet, a lot of it takes place when you do things like protocol, which are wonky sort of things that with computer scientists and stuff. And they're not like position papers with what are the social implications. They're sort of understood, but it's done in wonky terms. And then when it gets to places where there are supposed to be discussions that take the public interest in mind, like the United States Senate or the House of Representatives, or even the Federal Communications Commission, which regulates electronic communication in the United States. Even there, they adopt the position of, you know, turning this into a capitalist industry is a really good thing. How can we help entrepreneurs, the favorite term for monopolists, how can we help entrepreneurs 
you know, fleece people better, make money building their industries here. So that became the highest priority. And pretty soon they got locked in place. So by the end of the 1990s, the only question was how exactly would they be able to make money? No one knew that. And then finally we got the big five kicked in by, the, by 2010, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, and Google. And they set up the five monopolies. I think they are to this day the five most valuable companies in the world. Uh, and they predict from zero to 60 in a decade. And they dominate completely. They are monopolists in the classic sense of the term. Uh, and they rule the roost. And unless there's political change, they will rule the roost for the rest of your lifetime. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.